Dante Muse, author of Tripping Over Canvases, How to Open Your Own Art Gallery with No Experience, and art director here at Above Art Studios, located at 55 Moore Street, downtown New Brunswick, New Jersey. All right, welcome back to Art Life Podcast. We appreciate you tuning in with us this episode. Um, this episode, we have a special treat for you. Uh, we have an interview going on with renowned artist Lauren Curtis. How you doing today, Lauren? <laughs> yeah, they they have this pandemic going on, but um, you you're still able to to create um, or are you having any type of stifling in, in your creativity, or have you found that your creativity has increased during this time? to uh you know the, the full-time artists or those who are looking to transition into being our uh, full-time creatives um can you give us a little bit of your background So you went to uh, Mason Gross for for painting. Yeah, I went for painting, drawing, and uh, I took photography and some art making and other courses as well. But my main focus was uh, painting and drawing. And your internship that you got after uh, Mason Gross, did you you approach those as an artist, or you were going into the artist administrative administrative side? Gotta love a paid internship. So you gotta learn to love a paid internship. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, just all the general ways that a gallery works. And then I had another, uh, 
on paid internship at a graphic design studio for a little while where I was doing some um, graphic design work like before there was big time computer mm -hmm. technology where everything was like done by hand. Um, and uh, when I graduated college is when I got a job as a art consultant, you know, selling art for um, for Circle Fine Art Gallery in, uh, in Woodbridge. Oh, that's real nice. So, so those when you did the consultancy, um, you did you go out and uh, prospect or find like your own buyers, or did they already have like a, a list of you know um, you know returning collectors, anything that you went through, or that's what? It, so you basically just managed their like um, you know their rolodex. So, have you noticed any difference between uh, a corporate and a non-corporate gallery? Yeah, well, um, I like the artwork a lot better than non-corporate. All right. <laughs> I think it's bad. You know, some of it wasn't that great stuff, but, I mean, you know, a lot of times, I mean, there's a lot of fantastic corporate art out there, too. I mean, I've done corporate art shows as well, um, but I just find that in, like, the, um, in the less mainstream or less corporate definitely hear that that's that's one of the the pleasures i think that i enjoy of you know having a private gallery i kind of get to put up whatever i want to put up you know at, at, at the time um and then of course when we you know have a, a events of course less now due to the, the pandemic but um when we have our events or someone rents the space there might be something that they might request particularly it's usually only nudity if we happen to have something up and we never have anything distasteful or overt but um you know just having that that freedom to express you know just art and creativity period like i definitely really love it did, did you learn anything about yourself as an artist or um in in dealing with the artist when you were in a gallery so like you know you had to learn how to, to hang and you know i don't know if you dealt with with submissions or anybody coming in asking how they can be in a gallery or anything like that um did you like what was your interaction with the artists themselves in, in that situation um, i mean i didn't have a, a lot of interaction with the artists i mean if they did an opening um you know i'd be there i get to meet them and you know kind of help with setup uh, um i learned about how Get their work out there and you know 
expressing themselves and seeing, you know, how they were going about doing it taught me a lot, you know, and I was ready to do the same thing, you know. You know what's funny? As many times as I saw the name Hanna Barbera as a kid, like every time I saw it, I kind of never envisioned like a real person. Like it was kind of like a superhero or a wrestler or something like that. Like just the name, like Hanna Barbera, is like, what is that? Like, yeah, I never knew. <laughs> like, two guys, uh, yeah, Hanna and Barbera. And oh, it's two people too. Yeah. Oh, okay. I Oh, uh, yeah, because it sounds, yeah, it's like, it just sounded like a law firm. Like, it doesn't sound like a real person, like Hannah Barbera. Like, what is, that's somebody named for real? Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. really cool. And how long have you been an artist yourself? about going to school for art? trying to figure out, you know, where that income is going to come in. Um, Because just traditionally, a very small percentage of of artists, I guess kind of same thing like, you know, with sports, like with basketball, it's only 30 teams, you know, but it's thousands and tens of thousands of players that play. So those select few get put into a place where they kind of don't have to worry as long as they continue doing what they're doing, they're going to have income. The others have to go out there and, and, and find out, you know, um, how they're going to bring it in. So that fear of the inconsistency um, is why a lot of people don't indulge in their talents. And I personally believe that that's going to cause a problem because your talents are highly ind- uh, ind- indicative of your purpose. It's like you're giving these tools because you're supposed to do this. Um, you're supposed to offer something else, supposed to share something with someone, um, which is your talents, like your gifts they're gifts, but they're for you to give. So if you don't give your gifts, then you're depriving people and you're kind of not doing what you were put here to do. Um, so a lot of people, because they don't have examples um, of professional uh, full-time artists uh, and um, you know mentorship and things like that, where they don't have the courage to kind of you know go into that that realm, and that's what we're trying to combat. Um, you know, with with this Art Life podcast. 